Well, their fellow courtesans, concubines, curly cute Casanovas with a consuming commitment to crash communication and coy coquetry like this creepy curmudgeon right fucking here, like all you creepy curmudgeons out fucking there. Welcome to another installment of Rob from Nod's Nodcast. Or what's turning into Rob Lynn's wild fucking kingdom. This was not intentional. Earlier, I was feeding the praying mantis, my gal who's on the camera right now. We decided to get some footage of it. It turned into a colossal fuck up. Uh, the mantis, I have to hand feed it crickets. I don't like doing that. I have ethical problems with it. But I was going to hand feed She just wanted to get some video of it. I, I don't even know how it came about. We just, hey, let's get some video of the mantis eating. It went disastrously awry. I'll post some footage of that. And then later, um, I'm going to show you some of the aquarium stuff we got here. It started because my girl got an axolotl and then another one. Now she has three. One of them passed away. but the, So there was four in total. And she was keeping one in a 20-gallon, another in a 40-gallon, okay? Other two in a 40-gallon. She moved the third one over tonight, and they went mental with this fucking orgy. They started fucking the shit out of each other. I'm going to post some footage of that. But to make all of this have some context, because I've mentioned this in the last couple of episodes, all these weird bugs and shit I've been keeping. I'm going to give you a quick tour. So over here is where we you can't see him, of course, because why would he be out? Over here is where we keep our crested gecko named Tarzan. Uh, Leroy Tarzan Jenkins, he's over in the corner. You can just see his tail sticking out there. Of course, he's not going to show up right now. Next to him is a water scorpion I caught about five months ago. It's, no, I caught it in June, so it's, 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 it's like six or seven months ago now, I think. Uh, I can probably barely see it. We'll get some better footage if we can. Um, I can't believe that thing's still alive, still eating. Um, and go into the specs of the weird animal over here for all my water bugs. That's Bitey Betty, but she hasn't been eaten in like a week. These are the other three. Uh, they're uh, Bellastoma fluinium. They're little water bugs. I thought they were going to grow into big water bugs. I was all fucking wrong. Uh, they stayed really little because they were subspecies from this area. Me and my girl had to drive two hours. Uh, that's, that's them right there. They're aggressive as fuck and they bite really hard. Uh, but that one, that's, she was my favorite. She hasn't been eating. Um, they're small. Uh, the other one I had that just died is like, was like that big. It was a monster. It was one of the most fearsome things I've ever seen. These guys haven't been eating too good lately. Over here is a back swimmer. You're not going to be able to see it, but that is the most evil insect I've ever owned. Anything I throw in there, it kills instantly, drags to the bottom, sucks its guts out over the next six hours. Here's the mantis. I'll put some footage up of her. That's just where her cage is. Um, but I'll put up the mishap with her eating and trying to kill me instead. So, over here was where the single axolotl was named Jippy. We moved it uh, over here into the big one. And uh, they went fuck happy. Had this wicked, vicious, crazy, knockdown, drag out orgy. There's little sperm cones in there. You're not going to be able to see them. But it's hilarious. I'll put some video up. I'll also put a video up of uh, the gold one named Solaire, after the guy, uh, the dude from Dark Souls, uh, eating a worm, that came out fucking awesome. Down here is uh, my bullhead catfish. I'll, I'll see if I can get him to, uh, he won't come up right now. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get some uh, footage when he's feeding. Uh, I caught him when he was like this big. He looked like a tadpole, but I noticed he had a mustache, took him home. He's now about three inches long, huge eats like a fucking maniac and uh it's gonna grow up to about a foot so i'm gonna end up having to get like a fucking uh 100 125 gallon tank up there uh are two little upside down catfish they're of course hiding because that's what catfish do i don't even know why i'm interested in the fucking animals but i got tons of catfish um they swim upside down uh the speculation on why they swim upside down is that it decreases water drag when they're swimming on the surface looking for food over here is the big guy. This is Apu. He's from Kerala, India. His head's sticking out right now, but of course, if you turn the camera on, he's going to get irritable. He's the most reclusive fish we have. He never comes out. I have to put the food in there with him. He's a Gunther's catfish, also known as a sun catfish, also known as an eclipse catfish. I don't know why I'm so attached to this dumb fucking fish, but I am. And down here is our mishmash tank. Uh, that's an X-ray spec tetra. Uh, there's like a cobra endler in there. There's two, they're hard to see, but there's two um, ghost catfish in there. You can see through them. There's one right there. 
The rest of them are feeder guppies that I brought home to feed the water bugs. None of the water bugs would eat them. The back swimmers ate the shit out of them, but then they ate each other. And these things just survived. They're unkillable. I didn't know how to take care of them at first. I'm so glad I've been able to give them a much better life because I, I, I didn't know how to take care of fish and I can't even believe these things are alive. They're indestructible. But there's my collection of crap so far. We'll try to get some better pictures. I'll put up the footage of the animals. The mantis uh, trying to kill me and the axolotls fucking the shit out of each other. I was going to go with something much darker for this episode. Maybe we'll get into that, but I thought we'd start with something fun because this developed organically. See you in a second, guy. What I got to do to find a better way to make it to this? got to be a better way than this. Like this. I was waiting for a better way and waiting for a better day. I waited so long that I... Like I was waiting, I was hating, I was pleading, I was bleeding. I was praying, praying for something that never came. But this came. Thank you all. Ah! Oh, shit. Are the animals done fucking? All right. Oh. My name is Rob, and I am a music addict. Serious as a fucking heart attack. Think I'm kidding? No siree, Bob. I mean it. I am a music addict, and I am serious as a fucking air bubble in a syringe right now. Uh, and I mean that in all of the most negative connotations possible I mean that in the most negative way possible I'm a music addict but we'll get to that in a second I also I, I, I want to get to that but I also think that I may be one of the few people who has ever dragged themselves back from an antisocial personality disorder I'll get to that in a second well but we're going to start with something a little lighter and then burrow down into the fetid uh fakened darkness awaiting us so, uh, Mike Pruitt sent my gal Bree um, a parody song uh, based on Just One Shot. Actually, hold on. I heard this thing chirp a second ago, so i got to turn the fucking Facebook the fuck off. Give me a second. I'm also going to try to keep my fucking hands off of uh, the fucking uh, the microphone this time. I, I kept doing that the last fucking time. I kept touching the thing and fiddling with it, and it sounded like I was recording from the back of, like, a fucking um, off-road vehicle or something like that. It was like bumping and, and all this fucking shit. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep my fucking hands off that. You can also see that I'm wearing all this fucking team gear. Look at this shit. I'm also wearing my fucking team Speedo. I'll tone it down a little bit. We'll let my fucking gorgeous locks of justice free. Look at that fucking hair. I may be a fucking dried up Crip Keeper, but that's some fucking lush hair we got going there. Here for fucking days. All right. Back to the fucking story that's hopefully going to allow us to weasel our way into this fucking thing. So, uh, Mike Pruitt from Team No Head in the Oven, Team no Head in the Oven uh, sent me, sent my gal a uh, parody version of the song Just One Shot by Ramallah, which of course has great significance to this little shindig right here, which by the way... This is Rob Linz, a.k.a. Rob from Nod's Nodcast. Jesus, I'm juggling a whole bunch of fucking knives here. When am I going to cut my own fucking throat? Probably in two seconds. I probably already have. So he sent uh, uh, Nick from the band Orlando Furioso. Nick is another team member, another charter team member. Um, I, by the way, thought his name, his band's name is Orlando Furioso, okay? Fucking awesome name. I thought that was his fucking name. I thought that was his name. I thought his name was Orlando Furioso, which I thought was fucking awesome. His name's actually Nick, but I thought it was Orlando Furioso, okay? I thought he named his band after himself, which I thought was fucking awesome as well. I thought that was like so fucking spectacularly pompous. I was like, he named his band after himself? That's fucking badass. And a name like Orlando Furioso? Are you fucking kidding me? How cool is that? That's like being named like the Kingslayer or something like that or like, I don't know, fucking the Lightning Lord or... The Dark Lord or some shit like that. My name is Orlando Furioso. Like, uh, what's his name? The guy that, the guy that fucked everything that moved and killed the hound and fucking, uh, Oberyn Martell. The Red Viper of Dawn. That's not a monster, I told Cersei. That's just a baby. Good, good, good scene. Gave us all the feels. Doesn't matter who we are. What matters is the plan. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it, 
My eyes didn't see the light until I was a grown man. And by then, it was nothing but blinding. Bane voice, it's basically just Bill Clinton weighing the bell. <laughs> I like to be nude. Do you like to be nude? I like Asian chubby women. I really do. And then you just add the British accent. Crushing this plum. Whatever. What the fuck am I talking about? I'm mesmerized. I'm watching the fucking mirror behind me. Because as somebody pointed out in the last video, which I'll put a link to up left or right or whatever, something moved in the fucking uh, window. Something like like waved or something like that. And I remember seeing it while I was doing the video and it distracted me for a second. I thought maybe my gal was trying to fucking catch my attention. But there was nothing out there. The fuck's going on? It was weird. And, and I, it was there when I watched the video back. I still don't know what it was. There's nothing out there. Something went by the window or some shit. Maybe we captured a supernatural event and I can submit it to the National Enquirer and get like $100,000. Okay, parody song. Just one shot. Song that has some significance to us here at the fucking Nodcast, okay? Mike Pruitt sent it to my gal Bree, but he was sheepish about it. He thought that I'd be mad or like offended. And it was written by Nick from Orlando Furioso. And you should check them out too. I'm going to see if I can find a link and I'll put it down below to any of the music if I can. Um, so... I'm, I'm not the least bit offended, but we'll get to that in a second. So I thought it was fucking hilarious. So I'll, I'll read you a little bit. And I see if, see if I can do it in time. Uh, there's a hole in the wall, like a great black pit with ceramic tiling line, uh, with ceramic tile lining it. And the crust couldn't take another second of it. Yeah, I bake pie. On the top of the racks at the privileged few ones that are cool and ready for you. Apple and cherry and pumpkin too. And we sell them all by the slice. Bakeries to school in which I learned that if it gets too hot, the edges will burn. So I pulled a full on James fucking beard and rolled my dough out. Let it burn. Roll, roll, pat, pat, fill it up nice and fat with mixed stones. Pick fresh for you. With a crumble on top, there's here's a little pastry for the fatties like me. And you can chew through it. You can get that. You get the idea here. And add whipped cream to it. And if you're feeling really fancy... Add liqueurs to it, and you can fork through it or take a spoon to it. You can even smash your face like a buffoon through it. I, I like that one. Uh, knelt at the pie spot. Pray to the pie man. Yeah, I bet you didn't guess my name is Simon. Oh, that's clever. Knelt at the pie spot and pray to the pie man. A la moda, not time. Uh, a la moda, not it's time for you to decide, man. Slice this pie up. What I got to do to find a better way to boost my sales? Maybe I'll... Oh, I, I can't spit through that. I can barely do it myself. What I got to do to find a better way to make it through? There's got to be a better way to live like this. So he did a parody of this. And uh, Mike Pruitt... Uh, oh, I got to... I'll black your name out, Pruitt. No, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to let it ride. Um, he was nervous that I would be like offended or like miffed. And uh, he's like, if Rob, you know, if he's going to get like upset, don't show it to him. I think that kind of shit is hilarious, Okay. And it leads me to like a larger point that like, I hope it's going to lead me somewhere else. Jesus, I'm fucking rambling. Uh, swear I'm not doing coke. I swear I'm not doing coke. Seriously. Coke makes me fucking irritable as fuck. A few times I did it, which was not often. I've said it before. The last thing I needed, my, my entire experience with fucking drugs and alcohol, excuse me, was reductive and subtractive. I wanted stuff taken away from my experience. I didn't need to boost, like, you know, crank my experience up any any higher on the dial. Um, so, uh, Mike, like I said, Mike was nervous. So I was going to be irritated, and it reminded me of something. Um, two, two things, actually. Do you guys remember the Weird Al Yankovic parody of that stupid Coolio song, Gangsta's Paradise? Been spending most our lives living in a gangster's paradise. He's told, I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. Weird Al did a parody of that fucking song called Amish Paradise. Um, he's like, where well, I've been plowing and tilling so long that even Ezekiel thinks that my mind is gone. And he keeps adding like, fool, which was the best part of the song. The ju judicious addition of an occasional fool. Here and there. He did a par uh, parody of fucking Gangster's Paradise by Coolio, which isn't even a, originally a Coolio song. The music is actually, I think, a fucking uh, Stevie Wonder song, I think. But either way, uh, Al did the video and the song and everything, and it won, like, best parody song that year, which Weird Al always wins. Now, first of all, if if I ever reached the status where Weird Al did, a like, a, a, a fucking parody of one of my songs, 
Talk about the definition of, oh my God, I made it. Like you're supposed to be honored. The guy only parodies like cultural phenomenon. So that alone you should take like as like, like a compliment or whatever. But when they asked Coolio at the awards ceremony that night, I think he might have won uh, th- that album as like best fucking album or some shit like that. This was back in the days when we still acted like these rappers were actually fucking gangsters. At least that generation, even though none of them were. Like Dr. Dre, like Snoop Doggy Dog, um, fucking uh, Ice Cube. These guys were incredibly talented. These were some of the, the premier musicians of their fucking day. But we all pretended they were actually doing all the shit that they said in their fucking songs on a daily basis. There was just like this collective fucking hallucination. It trickled down into the hardcore scenes. This is when kids from like fucking uh, Rangely were wearing basketball jerseys and fucking flashing gang signs during song, uh, during hardcore band sets. Like if that shit fucking penetrated like fucking uh, clindamycin down to the bone of fucking society... And here's the thing, were those bands fucking incredible? Uh, was like NWA like incredibly vital and fresh? Sure, you better believe it. That album still sounds fresh to me today, the first one, straight out of Compton. And were those guys describing their experiences, that the stuff that they grew up around? Absolutely. fucking that, the, that is the environment that a lot of people are fucking trapped in. And there's nothing comic about it. It's fucking tragic. But um, uh, they took it a step further. They didn't just say, this is what we've been surrounded with. This is what we've escaped. They took that step further and said, oh, I am all these things. And I thought we had gotten past this as a society that we, I know that there's, and make no mistake, I know there's real gangsters in fucking uh, uh, rap, real gang members, real gang bangers. There are some, um, but not many from that day and never to the level they pretended to be. The gang the gangbangers and the gangsters that were attached to rap were at the fringes of it. They were the ones standing beside the rappers. The rappers needed them for credibility. That's like the entire death row story. And I ain't getting into that. That's nothing I want to dip my toe into. But if you watch like uh, Value Attainment or whatever, or fucking DJ Vlad, he has all of those guys from that time period telling the history and stuff. And those guys were like barely interested in rap. They were like neck deep. That's its own phenomenon. And I'm not mocking that phenomenon. It's a, it's, it's, it's a real experience for a lot of people. And I'm a, you know, technically a gang member myself i mean it, the fbi defines my friends as a as a gang even though it has nothing to do with like this like baller phenomenon or whatever like um but my point is like uh you know they took it a step further and pretended to be these things and uh you know i'm like i said i'm not knocking the phenomenon i know a dude from out the west coast uh, i'm not going to mention his name but he's a sereno he did like 10 years in one of the worst fucking uh, prisons out there in the CDC. You'd know the name if I told you. I'm, just not, I'm not getting specific because I don't want to narrow anything down. Uh, he went to prison for a very long time for dumping on two fucking dudes that had fucking snuck up on him, popped him. They'd shot him. He went down, pulled his shit, dumped on them, hit two of them, and they gave him like a little over a decade for it. Uh, so he's neck deep in that lifestyle. He, he laments it. He mourns it. I mean, he was about that life when he was in it. But um, he, he mourns that life. Like, he thinks it's a, a very uh, negative thing, something that he just got caught up in through his environment and stuff like that. And, um, you know, like, he, he always jokes, like, you know, when you're living that life, you ain't got time to be being some fucking celebrity or some shit like that. You're, you're doing other things. But either way, um, I always felt it was, like, that ethical thing, like, taking that step further. Did I, were all my songs... Is that the life I lived? Yeah. Did I take a step further and say, I'm the toughest guy I know? I saw a lot of violence growing up. Did I take a step further and say, hey, I was the one doing all the violence? No, no. There's a, a, a thing there. So either way, Coolio gets asked, what do you think about the fucking Weird Al song? And uh, he says, um, oh, I, yo, I'm with it, man. I ain't with it. And uh, they say, why? And he says, uh, oh, it's a serious song about some serious shit. And... Uh, you know, Weird Al got all, like, freaked out and thought he was going to get it beat up by Coolio, even though Coolio's, like, that big and full of shit. And uh, I was like, dude, you, you, you going this far with this fucking thing? Like, your song's about, you know, you're talking like you fucking shot, like, 3,000 people on, like, a daily basis to the extent that you can't even remember their faces anymore. No, that ain't you. I'm sorry. It ain't you. And, and, and reality's borne me out. May that have been your environment? Sure. I have no doubt. If you're from, like, one of those, you know, an area like that. I don't know where he was He was actually from. But obviously the NWA guys, they were from fucking Compton. That's a fucking horrible environment. And they were 
lucky enough to escape it. But Coolio's getting all fucking, you know, gangster with Weird Al. I'm like, slow the fuck down. First of all, it's a compliment. It means you made it. Second of all, that's not a really serious song. It's a fucking caricature of what could have been a serious song. Fucking suck on that. And I know this stuff's still going on because even like 10 years ago, I thought I would, I'd hope we were past it once like, you know, the aughts rolled by. But somewhere around like 2010 or something, I saw a new Snoop Dogg song where it's like the one with the fucking, uh, what's his fucking name? Uh, the guy from Cypress Hill, another one who back in the, even though I love Cypress Hill, I love Snoop Dogg too. I actually listen to a lot of his old stuff. I love Cypress Hill back in the day. Uh, the album Insane and the whatever the, with the Insane and the Brain on it and shit like that. But um, it, that's that song. So what'd he do? It's, uh, so what'd you hear? Someone, someone saying shit to Snoop Dogg. So what'd he do? Pulled his shit and he p- trying real hard and pulled his gun and he shot them all down. I'm like, this is 2010. We're still pretending this guy's like Wyatt Earp, like he's actually personally dangerous or something. I'd be scared of that fucking guy if he had a gun in my fucking face. I'm not saying he ain't surrounded by bad people. I'm not even saying he didn't come from a bad neighborhood, but we actually still participate in this collective hallucin- hallucination that fucking Snoop Dogg's running around fucking popping people on the daily basis. Slow the fuck down. Enough of this fucking fantasy shit. But either way, the guy got all fucking Coolio, whatever the fuck his name is, got all bent. The fucking, oh, you disrespected my serious, serious song. You, you serious, serious parody of what could have been a serious song. Your, your fantasy indulgence where you're acting like you've shot like 6,000 people and you're on a daily basis smoking any fool that looks at you fucking sideways. Are there people out there like that? Yes. Is Coolio one of them? No fucking way. So I want to be like, shut the, slow the fuck down. That's why, that's just, and it, it dovetails with, and I got to be careful, I'm racking up fucking minutes again. It dovetails with another conversation I had recently, actually with that fucking Serenio from fucking uh, the West Coast. He's actually a good good friend of mine. And, and dude, is that motherfucker deep? Uh he, we would, he tweeted something about an MMA fighter named Michael Chandler. And Chandler seems like a good dude, and he's a tough motherfucker. Uh, who did he just bang it out with? Justin Gaethje. That was like one of the fucking uh, MMA fights of all fucking time. In fact, it's one of those fights that if you want to show somebody this is what MMA is about, show them that fucking fight. Because if, if they're a boxing fan, they'll love that. That was like violence incarnate. But I guess what's happening is like Chandler had a couple of losses, and it kind of shook him. So we had, I got to wipe my face again. I look like I fucking stuck my head in a fucking barnyard animal's crotch. I don't know where this, like, fucking oily shit comes from. I don't have zits. I've never, I've had like, I've had like three zits in my life. Anyway, this dude, Mike, Michael Chandler, every time anybody asks him a question in an interview or whatever, fuck, I banged the thing again. Uh, he's got to spout some, like, wicked deep shit. And so people were making fun of that online. Like, they'll ask him, how was your flight here? Oh, it was a rough flight, and life's rough. You have to rise above it. Everything's a struggle. Getting my bags from the fucking bag thing was fucking difficult. And it reminds me of a story, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, people were catching on, and, and my, my the guy I'm talking about, my friend, I put a tweet up saying, I'm glad people catching on this. He always kind of struck me this way. It just kind of rubs me wrong. Like, the guy can't miss a chance for fucking uh, blowing some fucking, like, deep shit like everything has to be like a like an aphorism or some shit like that and it reminded me of somebody else and I hope I never get that way like I will always take a giant shit on myself and I don't mind when other people do it provided it's for real things provided it's for you know provided it's in line with the truth like if somebody was going around saying that like I was like a like a, a like a guilty of sexual assault or something like that I'd fucking kill him but um you know just like you're going to make fun of me for who I really am? Like, or like you know, chiding, gentle, good. Am I going to fucking get mad? Like, if Weird Al did a parody of me, I'd be fucking psyched. It means that, you know, did something with my life, right? Uh, but uh, there was this rapper I used to be really into, and I still am. I love his, his old stuff. Uh, I'm not going to try to zero in on who he is or anything. I, like I said, I don't want beef with anybody. Or not nobody. Like, he's, he, he's not big enough that this could... If, if presented him would, would entirely escape his notice like somebody like Cooley or Snoop Dogg they don't fucking know whether I live or die they don't care what I gotta say about him so I'm not worried about that but I wouldn't have a pot shot anybody anywhere near my orbit and he's not, not from far from here he put out two fucking great albums right around the time 
that Butter Whimper and Killer Celebrity came out. They were fucking revolutionary at the time. They were fucking great. I loved them. Lyrically original, musically original, ethically original. They were just really cool. And uh, I like I, I liked it, but so I liked what he was doing. So I was like checking into him, like interviews and stuff like that. I want to see what he was about. Dude kind of got on my fucking nerves because the dude couldn't answer any fucking question without a wicked serious and perfectly symmetrical and thereby sus as fucking hell anecdote to teach us something. The guy, like not everything's a fucking parable, bro. And if an interviewer asked him any questions he didn't like, or, like he had no sense of humor. He took him, I'll put it this way. The mother, the guy took himself real serious. And you can't, I mean, you got to take the music serious. That's the shit that you got to take serious. You got to take the work serious. But you can't take everything else. You can't take yourself serious. You're not the same thing as the music. Like, you know, you smell your own farts. You know what they fucking smell like. That's a pretty crude way to put it. But I'm just saying, like, speaking of which, like, you know, I know my hair's gorgeous, but I had a really morbid thought the other day. I was combing my hair and marveling at its fucking, um, you know, luscious sheen, rich contours and everything. And it dawned on me. I was like, dude, you're not going to be the last person to comb your hair. The fucking, the undertaker is, the mortician is going to be the last person to comb your hair. Unless you like, you know, stick a piece of dynamite in your mouth and blow your head off. So there's nothing left that they can even rebuild. Like it's dawned on me, like you're not going to be the last person to comb your hair. And you might not be the last person to comb your hair today. These are the kind of things that pop in my fucking head all the time. But but I was, the, 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 the guy took himself real serious. He couldn't miss an opportunity to lay some, he's always dropping some sage wisdom. And I, that's fine if that's what you do. But the guy couldn't miss like, so how's that Egg McMuffin you're eating? Let me tell you the story of another Egg McMuffin. An Egg McMuffin of justice. Like, dude, calm the fuck down. Same with Coolio. Calm the fuck down. Does anybody believe right now, 10 years later, that you 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 spent the ensuing 10 years running around smoking everybody that fucking cocked an eyebrow at you? No. No. We didn't believe it then, or at least most of us didn't, although a bunch... Enough of that. Weird Al fucking does a parody of you. That's great. My, if my friends do a parody of something I'm doing... That's fucking hilarious. I loved it. I thought it was great. Orlando, great fucking job. Mike, no, I wasn't the least bit upset. I thought it was fucking cute. Um, and uh, I hope I never take myself so serious. I know like I do talk parables sometimes on here and I use war stories to tell a point like a, like a fucking after school special or some shit, but I don't ever want to reach the point where I take myself serious. How, how the fuck could I? Every time I've ever taken myself serious... The world has shown up promptly to kick the living shit out of me, knock me off my fucking pedestal, and fucking remind me that I ain't shit. Although I will say one thing. I had a friend. I love this guy. But he used to take clips of me sometimes from like stage and stuff. And uh, I've seen people do some, some something similar on the group page with some of the women. And I, I was like, I didn't say nothing, but I was like, oh man, this, this could go bad. He would, the guy would take clips of me, like, you know, acting like an ass on stage and then do like that loop gif loop thing. And it makes you move real fast and spastic. Used to get on my nerves because that's inherent. That makes anyone look inherently clownish, but it's not actually them. Like if you catch me in the middle of dancing, like Molly Ringwald in my backyard, you better post that shit on fucking up on a website or whatever, post it somewhere, post it on the page. But if you going out of your way to make somebody look stupid in a way that they didn't actually do that it irked me a little bit I'm like that looks inherently stupid um it's the same thing if you take like you know i know there were people doing car catches of each other on the group page sometimes and uh they take pictures of each other from some of the zoom meetings and they would pick of course like a pick when the person's like in the middle of gesticulating like if you freeze frame a fucking video and you look inherently stupid when somebody does that i was like oh gonna piss off one of these ladies and one of these guys gonna get their fucking nuts cut off and I'm not going to get in the way. Let those nuts fly. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back and try to bring this back together to the whole music thing. My worst addiction of my entire life ain't fucking kidding. And um, how I may have clawed my back from me. All right, so uh, this thing's run really long. I, I, I wanted to keep it to, like, roughly this time period, like like what we got with the intro, with the bugs and everything, which, by the way, I'm going to put the full footage of uh the axolotls fucking 
and the mantis trying to tear the claws out of my hands and try to grab my fingers when it misses the cricket. I'm going to put all that full footage at the end as like a fun little thing. But um, this got really long, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying not to um, run these things to like a fucking hour. So I may hold off. We'll see. I'll probably launch into it right here. Oh, by the way, with the nature thing, with the fucking animals, um, I got a lot more stuff. Um, if anybody reacts to that, I will do deep dives on each one of those fucking animals. We're already thinking of doing it anyway, me and my gal, because she's a professional photographer. Um, I will bury you in fucking apex level nerd shit regarding each one of those fucking critters I got. I'll show you them fucking tearing, eating, and fucking fucking, and I'll tell you everything you need to know about them, even though I may get half of it wrong. Uh, but, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty thorough when it comes to my nerdery. But um, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can go further about that. And I'm, I'm kind of bummed, too, because I, I told you I wanted to get into the whole music addict thing, which I was serious as a heart attack about. But that would I would not want to do that short shrift. That would make a better long topic and maybe i'll save it for the fucking uh <clears throat> uh the christmas gathering on december 18th which by the way reminder uh the the fucking <clears throat> what's that weird wheezing noise <clears throat> excuse me the first um uh... <clears throat> excuse me yeah that's gross huh the first inaugural team no head in the oven fuck the holidays uh, gathering and live Nodcast, a.k.a. a spoken word, although there's going to be a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to bring the guitar down in case you guys want to hear some tunes. I don't know if you do. I'm just going to bring it anyway. There's an opening act. Uh, Side Pocket Louie going to play some fucking songs for us as well, but there's going to be other things. There's going to be, I'm thinking to do, there's going to be some birthday celebrations. There may even be some team awards and prizes. We're going to do another fucking raffle. The whole fucking nine yards. So come on down. New merch going to be there. Oh, and the merch page is launching that night. Don't forget that, please. I need help with that. Uh, but the merch, the stuff on the merch page is going to be different than the crap that I got at the show. I'm going to keep the stuff at the live events totally different than the stuff at the fucking, uh, uh, on the, on the webpage. So there's some exclusivity. And so the people that come to the live events can feel really cool and superior to those that didn't make it. Um, and I'm going to have a credit card swiper. Yeah, boy. Now you can make that impulse purchase once you got five beers in you and blow your fucking piggy bank on fucking gear like this. Hell yeah, I got new designs coming. The fucking artwork is sick. Okay, that's that's that. Uh, but I will fucking do more of that nature shit if you want. Remember the goddamn team thing. I'm gonna John Vahid's gonna record it. Um, he's coming down with me. Basically going to be spending the weekend together. Who knows what will happen? No, I'm just kidding, John. I ain't like that. Not usually. Not, and I, not since I stopped drinking. No, I'm just fucking around. Uh, and uh, fuck, total fucking uh, lost my train. Of, I'm real. Oh, I'm getting the triple like train of thought loss. Oh, in the merch page. Pay attention. To that. Okay, fine. Done. Uh, I want to get into a bunch of other stuff though. I want to talk about that goddamn Japanese prison. Um, what a transformative experience that would be. I almost want to go to Japan and fucking commit a crime because I guarantee that shit will change your life doing fucking five years in a Japanese prison. Um, I wanted to do a little more history because I got in an argument the other day with somebody, some other fucking pseudo wannabe intellectual like myself trying to argue that Timur, Timur, what we, who we call on the left Tamerlane, which was actually just like an Anglicization of Tamer the Lame, uh, Timur the Lame it turned into Tamerlane. Just like Salah Ad, uh, Salah Adin is actually, we call him Saladin because it's like the shortening. He was trying to say that Timur, the last, um, he was trying to say that Timur, the conqueror, uh, the Turkic warlord who founded what was called the Timurid, em uh, Timurid Empire, the guy who defeated Bayezid um, in battle and then kept him prisoner after. There's somebody was trying to say that he was the last great uh, what's the word? Last great avatar of Chinggis Khan, uh, Timujin, uh, Genghis, who we call Genghis. He's trying to say he was the last great Khan a la Genghis. And I was like, stuff that shit right up your fucking ass. Timur was just a ravager. The guy wasn't an empire builder. He just tore shit down. He, uh, granted, he was a 
a practically invincible fucking warlord. He died in the saddle, I think it was at age 68, on campaign at age 68, uh, kicking ass like he had done his entire life. I think the only guy that beat him was that rival ally frenemy of his, Toktamish, uh, from the other horde. They would go back and forth. I think Toktamish might have beat him a few times. Yes, he was a fucking formidable warlord, but he was no Genghis. Genghis changed the world forever. Genghis was an empire builder. Yes, he was a... And that was another topic I wanted to get off on. I had said in the previous video, uh, two couple of videos, I'll put a fucking link up about how uh, the, uh, the Mongols could be as brutal as the Roman Empire. And indeed, they could be. In fact, in many ways, the Mongols were more brutal because they basically had a policy that if you resist them, they're just killing everybody involved. That's the policy. That's it. No exceptions. You're not going to buy your way out, nothing. But I realize I didn't frame the distinction. I do not believe that the Mongols were as cruel and sadistic as the Romans. And that's another argument I could get into. But I got in this argument with this guy about the damn uh, Timur versus fucking Chinggis. And I, that's a topic I could go off on. But Genghis Khan in his, in his immediate couple of, um, uh, not predecessors, uh, fucking successors, uh, Ogadai Monke, um, uh, and then they fragment. Uh, Batu was like the kingmaker for a while. I know he had immense power. And then finally, um, Kublai Khan. Although by that point, the, the, you got the five hordes later on more. That guy built infrastructure that changed the world forever. In fact, without uh, the Mongol Empire and its ability to travel, the Black Death may, may not have decimated Earth. And that may sound like a bad thing. But NASA has done studies, you know, projecting population growth and, um, you know, civilization uh, plotting. And by the time of the fucking, what we call the, the Black Death, 1348, and that's actually just when it peaked. It had been ravaging Europe for about 14, uh, 14 years prior to that, moving its way across Europe. But it peaks in York, England at about 1348. There's been speculation by NASA that if that hadn't happened, European population levels were so high, the Black Death... Uh, killed off between 50 and 70 percent of local population that may be exaggerated to some extent but in some areas it was indeed 50 percent some areas like Scandinavia it was 70 percent some areas as low as like 35 percent boo fucking who 35 percent is one out of fucking four people practically or is it it's one out of three people uh can you imagine something killing off one out of three people you fucking know the population was so over uh, the, 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 Europe was so overpopulated at that point and it's fucking farming techniques were so uh, crude, their irrigation was so bad that another hundred years of it, NASA plotted that they would have fucking tapped the salt level, raised the salt levels, uh, the salt bed or whatever, and blighted Europe. So without the Black Death, Europe would be a desert right now, a cold desert, but a desert akin to like fucking um, the Middle East, like Iraq. And uh, that goes back to Genghis. Without Genghis uh, building the empire in the Pax Mongolica, is that, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, never said it out loud, uh, the travel wouldn't have been possible, you know, uh, or not to the same level. Black Death might have never got here. Who knows? Europe might have been a desert. Human history would have been changed. The guy changed the fucking world. Timor was like Attila the Hunt. He just ravaged. That's all he did. Um, tore, broke treaties. Like, the, uh, this is a topic. I could go, I'm fucking losing it. How many minutes have I already stacked up? Nine! Fuck! I'm cutting this off. Sorry, I'll put the videos up of the fucking animals in a second. To be continued, I'll do another video right now. I'll record it right now and just put it up in a week or something, or a couple of days, telling you why I am a goddamn music addict and why that isn't a good thing. Although it's perhaps something I'm resigned to. We'll see. And uh, that's about it. And this, So I guess the real point of this fucking damn rambling video was don't take yourself too serious. It sounds like a, a stupid point. No, it's like the essence of the fucking program, isn't it? Don't take yourself too serious. You're not that fucking important. It's the humility is the core. And, you know, what a long route to get there. Sorry, this was a babbler, but I had fun doing it. Follow right up with the fucking why I'm a music addict. Meantime, you got what you got. Hope to see you uh, on the 18th. My love to you all. See you later, guy. So here's where I have to hate myself for uh, giving a living thing to another living thing. I hate it. I don't like crickets. They actually repulse me.
but um, I don't like feeding them to a fucking cricket ogre either. Motherfucker. Sorry. No, go ahead, baby. She got the tongs. Yeah. This has happened once or twice. Yeah. She's in bed. Ah, oh, motherfucker, I'll give you another one. <laughs> Get her reaching. <laughs> Get the cricket, hun. She's never done this before. You gotta grab her, baby. Got her? She's got the tongs, too. Look at this. She's holding on to the tongs. Oh. This is turning into something new. It's just because I'm ready recording. Oh, she's holding on to the tongs. <laughs> yes, this is, like, not good. Let go. This is not good. What are you doing, baby? <laughs> stop, please stop. I don't want to fucking hurt you. Oh, I got all this like crickets everywhere. All right, hold on. So we finally got her to grab the cricket instead. Now she's got it one handed. I'll tell you something. She grabbed my hand the other night. Uh, well, I, I, instead of the, cause she was, I was trying to clean her cage and she fell. She started to fall, and um, I tried to pick her up. She grabbed me. I could not believe the force she exerted. Oh, she hasn't got a good grip. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I, I prefer it when, when she goes right for the head and just puts them right out of the misery. That's, that's the mantis doing horrible things to her. It's fellow bug.